KNBC 9 News starts with first alert weather. It's a first alert weather alert day. A snowstorm overnight and into the morning means several school districts are closed this morning. In fact, some of the largest districts have told us that they've canceled, including Kansas City, Missouri and Casey K Public Schools, Blue Valley, Shawnee Mission, Olathe, Independent Schools. The list goes on. That number is growing by the minute. So check the bottom of your screen. And we'll also have the list at KNBC.com just to keep you posted. But you know, this storm is causing all kinds of issues on the roads. Cars are at a standstill as we look live out at this a scout camera. Evergy is also reporting at least 9,000 people do not have power. About an hour ago, uh, that number was up to 9,200, so crews are starting to make work there. And KCI, Kansas City International Airport, the airfield is closed until further notice. Uh, we're, we're, wake, we're excuse me, waiting for a notice here in a second. We know that crews are clearing runways and taxiways as we speak, but you should definitely expect delays. It is a busy morning. We're here to keep you informed and keep you safe. Thank you for joining us. I'm Cody Holyuk. We have team coverage crews across the metro with a look at road conditions. But first, let's check in with meteorologist Katie Horner. Katie. Show you right now it is a weather alert day because of this heavy wet snow and the power outages and the poor road conditions. Many people are seeing at least one to two and some seeing three to four inches of snow already and it's not quite done yet. We are under a winter weather advisory until noon today as the snow will be exiting by then in central Missouri. It's already starting to taper down on the Kansas side. Still you can see the heavier bands look for the dark blue coming through Kansas City and Raytown right through Lee Summit right over that corner bend at 470 where you catch up with Highway 50. That's really coming down quite heavily with limited visibility there. Cody just talked about the power outages. Here are the latest numbers showing how many customers are without power in Johnson County. For example, 4500 people without power there. Here's a look at all of the counties reporting power outages and that extends all the way up to the Iowa border. Early snowfall totals show everybody getting in this area shaded in blue one to two inches and with the darker blue two to four. So that really does include the metro. We're right on the border. We're at 33 degrees right now and that's pretty common throughout the area. So this is a heavy wet snow. Our 12 hour forecast shows that ending in the metro between 8 and 9, exiting our viewing area by noon. We might see a little bit of sunshine this afternoon, but then the clouds are going to gather again, and we have another chance of light snow or flurries overnight tonight, but not everybody will see those. I'll show you that with FutureScan coming up. Johnny and Jamie, you guys are busy. I am I just know it, so what's the latest? All right, thanks, Katie. We uh, said early on we thought there would be a vast improvement in the rush hour as we got deeper into it, especially south of the river. This is not one of the areas where we're seeing any kind of an improvement, but it's not due now to the condition of the road per se, but the accident that occurred just before K7. This is eastbound I-70, way back by the uh, turnpike toll booth. So a couple of mile back up with this one, but this is the worst we have that we've seen south of the river. Primarily, all the interstate states and freeways now south of the river that we have seen are only wet. We do still have a host of accidents on the south side, but no major wrecks that are causing major delays other than uh, what we are seeing on I-70 right now. Further north you go, it's a completely different story with a lot more snow and hanging in there a little bit later. And now with that, here's Jamie. Thanks, Johnny. So I want to start with our first alert traffic map because I want you to see no area of the metro is really immune from the problems this morning. Liberty, it's been a bit quiet for you, but everywhere around the metro from the Triangle to I-74-35 Missouri side, I-35-435 Kansas side, we have seen accidents and stalled vehicles all morning. The area I want to focus in on is near KCI because as Cody told you at the top of the hour, we were getting reports that the airfield is still closed. We'll keep you posted if there's any updates, but take a look. We've got several accidents here. This this is I-29 at Mexico City where you've just got a line of semis just stuck here as you are traveling southbound to get towards the airport, excuse me, northbound past the airport on I-29. Uh, it's completely blocked between Mexico City and 152 Highway. Another problem, this is I-29 at 120th Street. This is near Cookingham uh, Street. This car has been parked there since before 4 a.m. this morning, stuck on the side of the road here. So one lane blocked. This is the exit as you're taking I-29 to the airport. Only one lane open to get to the airport this morning. And of course, seeing significant slowdowns along 435 in the Northland as well. KNBC 9's Martin Augustine has been watching the roads for us all morning long. And Martin, where are you right now and what are you seeing at this point? 
135th and Schweitzer in Johnson County. And, you know, we heard uh, uh, Johnny talking about this over the course of the morning is once the slush gets moved away, things will slowly get back to normal. That's kind of what we're seeing here uh, at this very busy interchange of 135th uh, and Schweitzer. If we look to the west here, uh, you can see that the road is pretty well opened up. If we look to the uh, north here, we can see that Schweitzer there uh, has been uh, plowed because the plows and you see a salt truck zooming past us right there. They're doing the work to plow and get that uh, salt down and things will gradually get, uh, uh, get improved. Now, the trouble is there's still a lot of that slushy sort of stuff on there. We have to watch our temperatures, of course, very closely uh, as to what impact that may have uh, on everything. But in this corner of the world in Johnson County, if you are taking it easy, this is a manageable commute. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. All right, thank you for that, Martin. We have crews all across the metro keeping an eye on the roads. Let's check in with Rob Hughes near 18th and Vine. Uh, Rob, how are the roads looking there? Hey there, Cody. Good morning to you. We actually moved over downtown to the T-Mobile Center. We are at Truman Road in Grand. And take a look here. You can see snow still coming down lightly here. And look at this as this car goes by here. Like Martin was saying, same conditions here, just slushy and wet here. But it's manageable, though. Traffic is moving along at a decent clip. But definitely, wherever you are, there's a lot of slick spots here. So you certainly want to leave yourself plenty of time, plenty of space, of course, between the vehicles in front of you. We're live in downtown Kansas City. I'm Rob Hughes, KNBC 9 News. Rob's been moving all over the heart of downtown Kansas City. Rob, thank you. You can always have the latest forecast in the palm of your hand with our KNBC 9 News app. It's free in your app store and all the newscasts and our live weather updates stream live on our app. Also, you can go to KNBC.com for that. Just three days out from Super Bowl 57, chance for the Kansas City Chiefs to grab their second Lombardi Trophy under the leadership of Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, and a chance for the Eagles to get their second Super Bowl win in franchise history. Today is going to be a busy day outside of Glendale in Phoenix as we hear from the Super Bowl performers and the NFL hands out its yearly accolades, its awards. Today also marks the reopening of the Super Bowl experience. KNBC 9's Donna Pittman joins us live from Phoenix this morning. Hi, Donna. Uh, good morning, Cody. A lot of folks decided to come here. Uh, I actually got a question from a viewer uh, through email uh, back in Kansas City who said, you know, do you have to pay to get into the experience? Because their thought is maybe you head out here, get a hotel room and just go to the fan experience if you don't want to go to the, the game or can't afford thousands of dollars worth of tickets to the Super Bowl. The answer is uh, yes, tickets are anywhere from $20 to $60 if you want to get a VIP pass. Uh, kids get in for free. But got to show you this behind me. This is where uh, later on today at the fan experience workers with Wilson they'll be actually making footballs so from start to finish you'll have a chance to, if you're coming out here to see just how that process works which is pretty cool because how many of us have actually seen a football made right all right let's talk about Sunday and the chief success okay it could once again come down to head coach Andy Reid and quarterback Patrick Mahomes we have seen this time and time again Lynn Jennings explains why this dynamic duo works out so well Good morning from Phoenix, Arizona. You can see the State Farm Stadium behind me as we get ready for Super Bowl 57 coming up on Sunday. Philadelphia Eagles versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, as the guys are expected to talk to the media later on this morning, we will be there for that. They also talked yesterday. Now, you hear about the great coaching quarterback combinations. you got Bill Walsh and Joe Montana, Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Well, of course, head coach Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are making names for themselves as they go for their second Super Bowl victory in five, uh, four years between those two. They talked yesterday about why it works so well between them. He puts the work in every single day as well, um, so you never question that he's prepared and ready to go. Um, he enjoys it. He, uh, he still, you still feel has that kid spirit, and he, he likes to joke around and have, have fun. Um, and then he, he knows how to get the best out of every single player. He wants to be the best. He strives for that every day. Every rep that he has in practice, he tries to do it the best he possibly can. Um, from a coach's standpoint, that's all you can ask. As I mentioned, we get a chance to talk to the guys a little bit from now. Also, later on tonight, the NFL honors and Patrick Mahomes is up for two awards. He could win his second MVP award. He's also up for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Reporting for Phoenix, I'm Len Jennings for KNBC 9 News. 
And later on this morning on First News, we will introduce you to an Arizona artist who has been a Kansas City Chiefs fan since he was six years old. And boy, you can't miss it. His art, well, it's all over the city and it's all about the Chiefs. We are live in Phoenix. Back to you back home. All right, Donna, thank you. We're going to be keeping our eyes on Super Bowl stories here at home and down in Arizona as we get closer to that 530 kickoff time Sunday evening. Count on KNBC 9 News for coverage of potential victory celebrations if the Chief comes, Chiefs come out on top. Knock on wood. See more of the stories we've shared so far, head to KNBC.com or the KNBC 9 News app. All right, 710, let's get back to Katie uh, watching the snow continue to cause problems here in our area. Yeah, Cody, what we're seeing is the heavier bands are now moving along Highway 50 and 470 between Lee Summit and Lone Jack, and that'll work its way down towards Warrensburg. When you look back to the Kansas side, notice from Shawnee to DeSoto up towards Baser, the snow is starting to taper down quite a bit. So in the next hour, we should start to see this taper from west to east, but it's going to linger a little while longer on the Missouri side, especially in central Missouri. But there again, you can see that dark blue. That's the heavier bands of snow coming down on parts of 49 and 71 highway. And then again, along highway 50. Future scan shows you might experience a little bit of light rain just as this is wrapping up. We're right on the line there between 34 and 35 degrees. We're heading to 42 degrees this afternoon. This morning's a weather alert time, but this afternoon the snow will have ended. Tomorrow, a brief light flurry, and then Saturday, melting continues, Jamie. Okay, thanks, Katie. We just got an update. It sounds like KCI is reopening airfields, which is great news. They were able to get the runways cleared. Of course, Cody will have the latest on that. Let's talk about your morning drive right now. This is a live look K10 at K7 where conditions are looking significantly better than they did not too long ago. I want to take this moment to look around the metro to see where road conditions are looking near where you live this morning. This is up near Clay Como where you see clear pathways of where it's been paved versus where it hasn't. The dusting of snow here isn't as bad as where we've seen the other side of the Northland closer to I-29, but still some significant snow there. And 435 Stadium Drive as you make your way towards I-70 looking much better. They've Clear the roads well, Cody. All right, Jamie, thank you. Chiefs Kingdom stretches far and wide, and that includes Arizona, the host state of Super Bowl 57. We'll introduce you to an artist whose passion for the Chiefs has inspired many of his pieces. Coming up, I'm going to use Future Scan to show you where that snow tomorrow morning is likely to fall and how much you can expect. Live from Arizona, the latest updates on your Kansas City Chiefs all this week. KNBC 9 News, leading the way.
And welcome back at 7.15. Take a look at your first alert traffic. We're looking at the K10-435 interchange. And your biggest worry now on the south side with the through lanes pretty much clear is getting off into that rough stuff on the side of the road. And that's what's causing these spinouts, we believe. Pickup truck in the center of the screen off the road. To the upper right, uh, seeing another car off the road as well. So the through lanes look okay, but watch out. Just stay in those lanes. If you get off of them, could end up like these folks. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Johnny. Want to remind drivers, 635 southbound at K5 is still closed about two hours after the initial closure was listed and we are still seeing significant slowdowns. This is 635 southbound as you make your way past Horizons Parkway. Northbound coming towards us looking okay. Southbound you're looking at significant delays at least 10 to 15 minutes. Cody. Jamie, thank you. Let's get back to our Chasing the Championship coverage. An Arizona artist has been a Chiefs fan ever since he was a kid and anyone who comes across him will know it right away. KBC 9's Donna Pittman has his story live from Phoenix, Arizona. Donna, how excited is this guy to have the Chiefs playing it right in his backyard? You know what, I'll tell you what, Michael Levine's excitement is both palpable, but it's also immeasurable at the same time. He grew up in Brooklyn, uh, saw the Chiefs logo, really liked it when he was just a little boy. Then he learned more about Lamar Hunt and the Hunt family, loves their values, and he just loves the Kansas City Chiefs. This is where Michael Levine's ideas catch fire, take shape, and are pounded into life. Having the Chiefs playing the Eagles in one of the largest native populations in Arizona is just perfect, perfect circle. And these are just for fun. Levine lives in Phoenix, grew up in Brooklyn, but his heart is in Chiefs Kingdom, has been since he was six. The uh, woman next door was moving and she gave me a red football helmet and I had an NFL lunchbox. And with my dad, we painted the Chiefs logo in 1974. It was in 2020 in Miami, we met Levine and his son, Mac, ready to cheer on the Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. The team is rising. Ready to say, I was there. And here is Mac today, same hat, same kid, still a Chiefs fan. And this thing shines in the sun and the shadows that it makes. This thing, Levine's latest creation. This is about four and a half feet, about six feet long and all 16 gauge steel. He'd love to put something same but bigger in Kansas City. A park and interactive and then it could be a sundial. This is bringing the action to the fans. Almost as bright as his spirit. Being able to drive this on the freeway and coming up on someone, they don't see it till it's in the corner of their eye. And yeah, the reactions are fantastic. So you can imagine just how excited, or maybe you don't have to, Michael is and Mac and their family to now not have to go to a Super Bowl, but actually have a Super Bowl involving the Chiefs coming to them here in Phoenix. We are live in Phoenix. Back to you at home. What an amazing story it and is. a fandom that has lasted for years. Love that. Uh, Katie, uh, what, what should we be watching as this snow kind of wanes? You know, uh, kids in, are going to want to play in it. And sure. it's, a, it's a wet, heavy snow. But what we're concerned about are people trying to clear the snow. It's so heavy. You can put a stress on the body. Mm -hmm. Even the National Weather Service is saying, hey, be careful. Uh, this is a really heavy snow. You might want to just let nature melt it before you try to clear it. But do try to get it cleared off of your front porch and your driveway today at some point because it could refreeze overnight tonight and that could cause more slippery conditions tomorrow morning. So let the sun work on it a bit this afternoon. Let it reduce its weight, get it cleared off and hopefully dried out before we drop below freezing. Again, we're going to gradually climb up into the low 40s today. We do have weather alerts, but that's just for this morning while the snow is coming down until they do get a chance to clear the roads. But then partly cloudy this afternoon, 42 degrees, very slushy. And then this evening, clouds gather again, temperature drops, and we have a brief passage of flurries coming by early tomorrow morning. I want to show you that with future scan, but first let's talk about where it's snowing right now. To help you find your bearings, here's Kansas City and their state line. So on the Kansas side, you'll notice that even up towards KCI and over towards the Legends, the snow is starting to taper down. But on the Missouri side, especially from Pleasant Hill over towards Holden, the snow is increasing in intensity and that's moving east. So you'll notice the snow increasing for you in Warrensburg, Sedalia, up towards Lexington. Here again is the whole system. You can see it's spinning counterclockwise around its parent low system. As that moves away, it'll gradually, maybe even turn to a brief rain as it moves off. Now watch closely. I'll freeze the frame here because if I didn't, you might miss it. This is about 2 o'clock tomorrow morning. 
and we have some patchy flurries going by, but that's it. So that should not have an impact on your morning tomorrow. What most likely would have an impact is the fact that we refreeze again tomorrow morning. So anything that hasn't been cleared off could become icy in the morning. We'll start at 22 degrees tomorrow morning, climb to 39 tomorrow afternoon. So tomorrow is going to be a cold, typical winter day where maybe just a couple of degrees cooler than normal with 41 being the normal high. Tomorrow only 39, but my goodness, what a difference one day will make because Friday or Saturday, we start off extremely cold at 18 degrees. And then with the help of the south wind, we get up to 53 degrees Saturday afternoon. So even the snow in the pockets of shade will start to melt. 30 degrees again Sunday morning for Super Bowl Sunday. Our high temperature will be 59 degrees. Just can't beat that. The winds will pick up a little bit during the day as well. Monday, we're staying up here above normal in the 50s. Morning low, still 31. Then on Valentine's Day, we are looking at rain showers moving in. It'll stay very close above freezing, 35, 50 in the afternoon. Another chance of a rain snow mix comes in on Thursday. Meteorologist Nick Bender is up next to talk about that. Seven twenty-three on a first alert weather alert day. Snow continues to fall across the Kansas City area on first alert live radar. You see the heavier band here coming down I-70 and 470 across Blue Springs and Lee Summit. The snow is not as intense back to the west there on the Kansas side. South and east, this looks like it's now changed over to snow there on 50 Highway in Warrensburg, and we still have that steady snow falling across northern Missouri up I-35 through Cameron, Bethany, Trenton, and Chillicothe. On our first alert 12 hour forecast, uh, snowy impacts now through about 9 o'clock. That snow is going to start to taper off, but the roads will remain slushy. We do make it above freezing this afternoon, so that will continue that melting process. Flurries are possible tomorrow morning, 39 degrees for a high and still expecting 50s over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday on our first alert nine day forecast. Chance of rain showers on Tuesday, rain and snow chances on Thursday.
726 on a first alert weather alert day. An overnight snowstorm means several school districts have shut down for the day. As some of the largest districts include Kansas City, Missouri and KCK Public School Districts, a Blue Valley, Shawnee Mission, Olathe, Independence. The list goes on. Uh, we've seen the number change by the minute. You can check the bottom of your screen or go to KNBC.com for the complete list. We're also seeing a big impact when it comes to power outages. This heavy, wet snow is causing major problems. Evergy is reporting at least 7,800 people don't have power right now. That is an improvement because about an hour and a half ago, that number was closer to 9200. So Jamie, they're making quick work of it. Well, we are still seeing problems across the metro when it comes to the roads. This is a live look K10 near Ridgeview as you're traveling eastbound. It looks like in the, or in the process of towing a car that was stuck in the road. But look at how slow the traffic is as you try to make your way to 435. We are seeing problems all across the metro this morning. We'll take another look at your first alert traffic map coming up on KCWE. KNBC 9 News starts with first alert weather. A snowstorm is causing problems across the metro this morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cody Holgia. And I'm Jamie Weiss, keeping a very close eye on the roadways. Yeah. We have had almost 30 active accidents this morning. And Katie, a lot of this just coming from so much snow overnight. You said right. it's just a matter of a, a degree difference. That, we were talking about that yesterday. This was contingent on one degree, mm -hmm. and it did. And it fell, and as a result, we are dealing with a very heavy, wet snow across the metro. There are power outages. There are accidents, as Jamie just mentioned, low visibility and a lot of schools have been closed as a result of this. So this morning is a weather alert time frame. If you can avoid travel right now, we recommend that you stay on inside. Let the sun work on this and melt it off. Let the 
snow plows get on this and put some chemicals down so that once they clear it, it won't refreeze. But look how much snow has fallen in the metro, one to three inches, two to four inches up near Trenton and Chillicothe, and it is still coming down on the Missouri side. The dark blue indicates the heavier snow. Let me bring you into that area using our first alert radar. You can see from Lee Summit to Pleasant Hill through Greenwood, it is coming down big fat flakes that are going to add up, make the roads very slushy, and that's going to work down Highway 50 towards Lone Jack and Warrensburg. You can expect your snow intensity to increase. Here in the metro, we have been tracking the power outages of According to Evergy, we have 4,500 customers without power in Johnson County, about 1,000 without power in Jackson and up towards Platte and Clay counties as well. This is somewhat of an improvement from what we saw earlier this morning, but even as we pull the map out, you can see a lot of counties reporting power outages right now. But look at our temperature. We're right on that edge, 33 degrees here in KC. This afternoon, we anticipate a little bit of sun that will help with the drying of the roads and the melting of the snow and temperatures should be in the 40s. But Johnny, I am concerned about refreezing tomorrow morning. Well, there you go, and there's plenty of moisture in this snow. It is very, very slushy, but uh, waiting for the organic method to uh, uh, clear some of the snow, you're going to find that uh, that will help this afternoon for sure. Uh, they call it the uh, conga line, I believe, if I have that right, where the snow plows now are moving on I-70. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, great news there. This is just as you come out of the Kansas Turnpike toll booth and all the way over to about 110th to K7 is where we had an accident. I-70 shut down. Still lots of traffic uh, uh, behind this, but uh, once those plows get through, I-70 will be nearly back to normal. They're even getting it off the shoulder there. Back to you in the studio. All right, thanks, Johnny. Taking a look at our first alert traffic map. It has been a busy morning all morning long where we have seen accidents and vehicles pretty much everywhere. I want to zoom in on two particular accident scenes and kind of show you what we've been dealing with this morning. Let's go ahead and start on the Missouri side of the Metro as we take a live look. Uh, sorry, the Kansas side of the Metro. This is 635 as you are approaching the Missouri River, where all morning long 635 to K5 has been completely shut down and blocked. Traffic is now moving, which is good, but I want you to just take a close look at the roadways. They almost look a little bit icy this morning and now showing you the Missouri side of the Metro 435 at 350 Highway, where we have been dealing with some accidents on both sides of the interstate here. It looks like uh, that truck is almost kind of sliding backwards. So keep in mind, especially on some of the bridges and overpasses and ramps, it can just be really slick and difficult to get up. Uh, you don't want to decrease your momentum. You want to keep trying to push through, especially if you don't have four wheel drive to get you up that hill. We want to check in with KBC 9's Martin Augustine. Martin, you've been watching the roads for us all morning long. Tell us where you're at this morning and what the conditions are like near you. Jamie, we're at I-435 in Quivira here in Johnson County, and let me step out so you can see uh, traffic going both east and west here, and I think what you'll notice is there's no trouble here. Uh, certainly the pavement is wet, but plows have been through there. There's been enough trucks uh, coming through, and now we see some plows coming through right now probably in the process now, just continuing to put material down there. But the work has gone pretty well. This is slushy, heavy snow, but a snow plow can handle that sort of thing. And of course, knowing that this section of road gets a lot of traffic, it got a lot of attention. So right now, if you were to, uh, if this is a part of your commute or is about to be a part of your drive this morning, as long as you're being careful, because we are now in winter driving conditions, you are going to be able to manage through here just fine. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC Night News. Martin, thank you. The Overland Park Police Department is already asking you to walk in accident reports at a, a later date. These are accidents in where uh, you are not hurt, no one is hurt, and you can still drive your car. They say just collect all the information, exchange information with the other driver, and then bring it all to the Sanders Justice Center on Foster Street or the Myron Scape building off of Antioch later on. We have crews all across the metro keeping an eye on the roads. So let's go back downtown with Rob Hughes near 16th and Main. Rob, what are you seeing? Hey, good morning to you, Cody. Let me step out here so you can see conditions at 16th and Main as we're looking south towards downtown. And like we've been hearing all morning, definitely the case here. It's really slushy, it's really wet, but traffic is moving along decent. Certainly there's plenty of slick spots here, but people are out and about walking around. Businesses are open, so definitely things are still coming to life here in downtown Kansas City. But as we take a look now, yeah, you can see it's 
pretty pretty wet, pretty slushy, but conditions again not too bad as snow plows have also we know been hard at work in downtown here. We've seen them definitely working hard all morning so people can get to where they need to be. We are live in downtown Kansas City. I'm Rob Hughes, KNBC 9 News. Bob, thanks. You can always have the latest forecast in the palm of your hand with our KNBC 9 News app. It's free in your app store. All of our newscasts stream live on the app and live weather alerts. You can go to KNBC.com as well to get those. We're counting down to kickoff for Super Bowl 57 in Glendale, Arizona, three days away from the big game between the Chiefs and the Eagles. And it's going to be a busy day in Phoenix, starting with the reopening of the NFL Super Bowl experience for fans. It's where we find our Donna Pittman live this morning. Hi, Donna. Uh, hi, Cody. Good morning again to you. Good morning, Kansas City. Uh, yes, the Super Bowl experience uh, will happen a little bit later today, so we get to kind of look around while well, we get to look around in the quiet here. I want to show you we're in an area where they're auctioning off NFL items. Take a look at this. OK, a Travis Kelsey jersey, not just any jersey, though, a game worn jersey. This worn in the game they played in Mexico in the 2019 uh, season when they took on the Chargers. Of course, that season they went on to win the Super Bowl. So just one of the many auction items here. I uh, want to talk about this Super Bowl, both the Chiefs and the Chargers. They're putting in final preps for game plans. These videos provided by the NFL. Now both teams are making sure that they'll be ready to go Sunday. Both teams are led by black quarterbacks. For the first time in Super Bowl history, you have two black QBs starting. Now, both defenses know that uh, they need to contain the playmakers in Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. He showed you how good he is this year. Uh, I think he only lost one game every game he started. He's dominated from the beginning to the end. Um, he's been very efficient with his legs, not only with his arms. So uh, we got to find a way to contain him. Mahomes make him go. Mahomes is the guy that extends the plays and makes the drops the dimes. And you know he, he's he's done some great things uh, from you know just watching film and then just watching them on TV. Now, one player who's really making his mark this season is a rookie. We're talking about George Karloftis. He is the rookie defensive end. And KNBC 9's Laura Moritz found out that he's grateful and he's just taking this all in. Good morning, Kansas City. I'm Laura Moritz. You know, we met George Karloftis in Vegas 10 months ago before he was even drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. And he was really just this 21 year old kid that was just hoping to be drafted by someone. We talked to him. He was hoping to be drafted by the Chiefs. Here's what he said. And here's what he said on opening night. Chiefs don't play from behind too much. So that'd be that'd be awesome to kind of get the rush to pass her and I love their defense, you know, I, I love their coaches back there, and it, it'd be it's a great organization. It's been crazy. It's been a whirlwind, uh, but it's it's the, li the life I want to live. It's It's been incredible. It's been a blessing. So how far has he come? Really, when you think about it, just in 10 months, he really is a powerful member of the defense. As a rookie, he has been starting. And to think that he grew up in Greece, he went to Purdue, and now he is just such a valuable member of the Chiefs team. So he's come a long way, and to think that we met him in Vegas is something really, really special. Lara Moore, it's KMBC 9 News. Thank you, Laura. It certainly is just one of many special guys, special stories uh, that we are seeing on this special Chiefs team. We are live in Phoenix. Cody, back to you. Donna, thank you so much. Count on KNBC 9 for your coverage leading up to, through, and after Super Bowl 57. Our crew will have live reports throughout the day today from Arizona. We'll also get you ready for kickoff with our Chasing the Championship special tomorrow night at 7 on KNBC 9. Let's get back to reality here where we are not dealing with a dry heat. We're dealing with a lot of wet snow. <laughs> yes, we are. Quite the total opposite of what Donna is dealing with right now. We have a winter weather advisory that will expire at noon today and it covers the metro, but they might start clearing some of these counties early as our snow is in the process of exiting. Now on the Kansas side, you have a few light snow showers coming down there, but it's the darker blue. That is the snow burst that is coming through. It can put down an inch of wet snow in a, in a heartbeat. So that is still working through Jackson County, Cass County, Johnson County on the Missouri side, and it may swing up towards Lafayette County. So still not done with this in our 
viewing area until about noon, then it will all be gone. You might see a brief flurry tomorrow morning, but few and far between, and we'll look for a warm up as we head towards the weekend. Here's your forecast for the next three days. This morning's a weather alert. Tomorrow will be uh, a few flurries in the morning, Jamie, but not a big deal. Cold though, 39. 53 Saturday afternoon. All right, we're going to pay close attention to that. Thanks, Donna. A little bit of levity this morning. We've been talking a lot about the problems on the roads, but here's a solution. Brushy McBrush face out there since 430 this morning, hard at work, making sure the streetcar tracks are completely cleared. Streetcar service is running on time. No issues there. We do still want to let you know that we are running into issues on the roadways. This is I-29. As you were traveling southbound to 152 highway, look at this car. It is sliding right now. This is a live look. This car just happens to be sliding as we are watching this live view. They have closed this exit likely because of this problem. You cannot get over this hill and up this intersection because of the slick conditions. Looks like we had an accident here near that intersection. And one thing I really want you to be wary of, there are people outside on the road, law enforcement officials with such slick roads like what we're dealing with right now. That is a hazard to everyone, yourself and the people around you. So please, if you do have to get out, just take it slow, build in that extra time, Cody. All right, well, there, Jamie, thank you. The death toll continues to soar following earthquakes and aftershocks in Turkey and Syria. And as time runs out to find survivors, we have an update on the rescuers search through the rubble. Just looking at the road surface temperatures, many are being reported in the mid 20s, though our air temperature is in the 30s right now. Weather alert continues this morning, improving weather later this afternoon. Today is an alert day. Stay connected with First Alert Weather. KMBC 9 News, leading the way.
745 on this first alert weather alert day where we have just been dealing with problem after problem on the roadways. This is I-29 southbound. This exit to 152 highway eastbound is completely blocked. We've been watching this situation where at first I thought these cars were just completely sliding and now it appears they are trying to guide these cars back down so they can get away from the area because no cars have really been able to get up and around to 152 highway, hence why they have closed this exit. Road conditions are looking very slushy in the Northland, but let's check in with New Shop. County Rollins checking in on the Kansas side of the metro now. Well, the Kansas side didn't get as much snow, but plenty of it uh, nonetheless, and we still have problems with some slush on the road. As we've been talking about, the through lanes look fine. This is going to be uh, northbound 69 highway just before the Overland Parkway, Blue Valley Parkway split, and it looks like they are just now clearing the accident. There's a tow truck driving away with the vehicle right now. So uh, all lanes are back open, but look at the backup all the way back beyond 135th Street. I think this is going to be back to 151st was which is a couple, two or three miles and a lot of traffic to sort through. So the big uh, concern when you head out this morning, not those through lanes, might be a little bit slushy, but it's getting off the road at all where the uh, slush is. We talk about it even when the snow isn't very deep and it's uh, kind of slippery getting off into that stuff. With this slush, it'll grab that wheel and spin you around, and that's why we have uh, probably still a dozen or so slide-offs to report around town. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Johnny, thank you. Uh, more than 16,000 people, 16,000 have now died along the Turkey-Syria border after earthquakes and aftershocks earlier this week. But the final death toll may not be known for weeks. The survival window, as it's called, is closing quickly. ABC's Andrew Dibbert's watching the story. This morning, time is running out to find survivors in the rubble of the Turkey earthquake. The first critical 72 hours have now passed. Rescue teams hoping for more miracles. <laughs> This little girl trapped but alive, one of the few who've been safely evacuated to the hospital. But the losses are unimaginable. Many victims are refugees who fled war-torn Syria. Here, seven members of one extended family were found. They were killed as they slept. The youngest, six weeks old. ABC's Ian Panel was there. What's happening now is that they're basically using the digger to try and pull away as much rubble as possible. They unearthed the boy's bedroom, but the news was not good. An overnight word that a family of four from New York City died in the quake while visiting family. Turkey's President Erdogan has acknowledged shortcomings in emergency response efforts, blaming bad weather and damage at a local airport. He's also under fire for restricting access to Twitter, which can be a communication lifeline for families of survivors. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Representatives with the government of Syria say about 300,000 people have been displaced by these quakes. Groups like the Red Cross are trying to provide blood, clothes, blankets in the bitter cold. Tonight, the NFL's best will be recognized for their work on and off the field. It's almost time for the NFL honors. The award special starts at 8 tonight. The league will be giving out big awards for MVP, Offensive, Defensive Players of the Year, Rookies of the Year, the coveted Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, and many others. This is hosted by Kelly Clarkson this year. Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes, as you know, is up for several awards, including Man of the Year and League MVP. We'll have updates on our newscast tonight on KNBC 9 News. 748, she is the first mom to ever have boys face off in opposing teams in a Super Bowl. We're talking about everyone's favorite mom this week, Donna Kelsey. As she says, she'll be cheering for the offense Sunday. That's a safe bet because her son Jason plays offense for the Eagles. Travis Kelsey plays offense for the Chiefs. She's staying neutral. Her shoes, look at that, and her jersey show how seriously she's taking that mission. She says the competition between her two sons began when they were little. They've always competed with each other. I think that's why they play at the highest level now is because they had two extremely talented athletes that they were playing against every single day. Now, there have been more than 370 sets of brothers playing in the NFL. Uh, Donna Kelsey says she's surprised it did, this didn't happen sooner. And she's honored that her family gets the distinction. Uh, you know all about sibling rivalries, Katie, with your kids. Uh, <laughs> yes. Not in the Super Bowl, but, you know, everybody has their own thing. I think it may be a good sign that she's wearing Travis's jersey on the front. That is nice. I like that. Yeah. That, that, that. I'll take that as a positive sign for us. Hey, let's look at what happened last night. We knew it would come down to a degree or two that would change the amount of snow, and that's exactly what happened. We had some cold air, some things working upstairs in the atmosphere to help generate that cold air, and that 
turn this snow uh, rain over to snow early and intensely. And that's why we have so much more snow on the ground this morning and it is still coming down. It is starting to taper off on the Kansas side, but that dark blue coming through Jackson County down into central Cass County will circulate into Johnson County, Missouri, and you will have limited visibility and quite a significant snow rate as that comes down. Here's just the latest snowfall totals, but these are going to start ticking up as that heavier band comes through. Everybody's seen about an inch. Some have seen two to four inches of snow in the metro right now. The numbers that we're getting are between one to three inches. Also, we're keeping track on power outages. All of the counties that are in blue have some power outages being reported, but look at the legend. This is just on the spotty side, so there's some good news there. This was a wet, heavy snow, and at one point, I think we counted almost 4,500 power outages in Johnson County alone, but that is starting to improve a bit right now. Our temperature about Five feet off the ground is 33 degrees, but pavement temperatures are in the 20s. That's why it is still very slippery this morning. This afternoon, the sun might peak out for a little bit. Our highs will get into the 40s. That will help melt the snow, especially if they have had a chance to add some chemicals to that. That'll help melt that and dry that, which is what needs to happen for your front porch or your driveway. Wait a little while before you go out to try to clear it because the heaviness of the snow could be a health issue for people who might have respiratory problems or heart problems. National Weather Service is saying, hey, just wait a little while. The sun will help melt it but do make sure it is cleared before you go to bed tonight because anything left untreated is going to refreeze. We will be dropping down into the 20s tomorrow morning. Today, there you see our 12 hour planning forecast, a little bit of sun in the middle of the afternoon, weather alert just for this morning. We're almost ready to expire that. 42 degrees at 2, 40 at 4, at 8 we're dropping down to 36 degrees. And by tomorrow morning, we're 22. That's why we're saying clear that off or treat it so you don't have to step out on ice tomorrow morning. We're only climbing to 39 degrees tomorrow afternoon. It'll be a cold, somewhat blustery day. A northwest wind will come in. Saturday morning also still, if it's not been treated, anything that refreezes would be ice. 18 degrees. Look at the huge change though. By afternoon, we're up to 53 degrees on Super Bowl Sunday. 30 in the morning, 59 in the afternoon. But for Valentine's Day, we are predicting some rain and a high of 50. Nick will be right back.
756, let's get a check of your first alert traffic. We've been seeing snowy and slushy conditions all morning long. This is 635 at the Missouri River as you're traveling southbound to head over the river. This has been a problem spot for us all morning long. We've got cars that are off the road here have slid off. It looks like this car may have slid a little bit into what looks like a snowy bank there. But overall, the good thing here is cars are traveling slow. We're going to continue to track road conditions for the next hour coming up on KCWE, Cody. All right, Jamie, thank you. This overnight snowstorm means several school districts in our area are closed today. Some of the largest include Kansas City, Missouri and KCK Public Schools, Blue Valley, Shawnee Mission, Olathe, Independence. The list goes on. That number really surged early this morning. You can check the bottom of your screen for closure information or go to KNBC.com for the complete list. The storm is also leading to power outages across the metro. The numbers are back up a bit. Evergy now reporting at least 8,500 people are without power. It uh, was up to 9200 at its peak. It went down a little bit, up a little bit, so that's fluctuating. We're going to continue to watch those numbers for you. And you can always have the latest forecast in the palm of your hand with our KNBC 9 News app. It's free in Google Play and Apple App Stores. All of our newscasts and our live weather updates stream on our app and online at KNBC.com. Cody, this storm just took a favorable path for snow, but the kicker was that there was so much lift, it was able to cool the temperatures not only at the ground, but through the layer of the atmosphere the snow is created by one degree, maybe two, and that was enough to kick it over to snow faster and snow harder, which we still have light to moderate snow falling here, especially to the east of Kansas City on I-70 and 50 Highway, and that will continue for at least the next couple hours on our first alert 12 hour forecast between now and 10 o'clock. The snow will taper off. It will still have some slushy roads. We'll make it above freezing for today, so not concerned about any ice or refreeze for your evening drive. Now, tomorrow morning, we do have a chance of flurries. 39 degrees on Friday. Still expecting much warmer weather, though, for Saturday and Sunday, with highs reaching into the 50s. Chance of rain showers on Tuesday. Chance of rain and snow on Wednesday.